So if you're thinking about getting into Historic, but you're not sure which deck to craft, you want a real good strong deck to start ranking the ladder with, but we know what the wildcard situation is on Arena, and you've only got time to put in maybe one deck, put all those cards into one deck. Today, I've got five of the best Historic meta decks for you, for us to take a look at, and maybe one of these will be decided by if you've got the closest amount of rares, or if it's your favourite colour, or if it's just one that you really like the look of. So, without further ado, let's start looking at the first deck. So the first deck we're looking at here is Mono Green Elves. Elves is very strong, it's a tribal deck. It's good because, you know, you're never going to really get land screwed on it. It's just Mono Green. Well, actually saying that, you do have Faceless Haven in it as two of, so you may actually get mana screwed, but that would be very, very unlucky. So basically what you'll be doing here is amassing a field. It does run a Collected Company. Uh, which are, you know a few historic decks do because it's a really good strong card and a really good card to craft as well because you can use it in multiple types of decks. What this does is look at the top six cards of your library, put up to two creature cards from a mana three or less from a them on the battlefield, rest on the bottom of the library in any order. Now with elves we do have a lot of three or less creatures in there to put on the field so potentially you are always hitting those creatures. Now, if we take a look at the stats, it runs 34 creatures with an average CMC of 2.7, uh, four non-creature spells. It really is a creature-heavy deck. And if you like creature aggro decks, this is probably going to be the deck for you. Super consistent and super strong. Um, Allure, Allosaurus Shepherd is the mythic that you've got across. Can't be countered. Really good against control decks. Green spells in all can't be counted which is good when you're playing collected company this has a really cool ability of pain six until end of turn each elf gets control base toughness and power of five five uh becomes a dinosaur in addition to its other types as well but you're not really worried about that um it's got lots of early one drops land of our elves because you want to be ramping out you've got just beer a sentinel as well tapping elves it's all about getting mana dorks down and then just amassing the quickest field you can and then building up the biggest power you can with these as well. You've got Elvish Warmaster, which is a cool card. When it ends a battle, you create a 1 1 token as well, which is cool because you just want to keep making these elves and it's a go wide strategy. You've got Elvish Clan Caller, an important card to the deck, pumps up your elves, gives them all plus 1 1. You can then pay 6 and search it and go and get another Clan Caller. You think six is a lot, but it's not when you've got this kind of, uh, you know, mana dorks and ramp in there to literally do it as early as you can. More druids that will pump up your elves as well. Other elf who just get plus one one, and then you can tap it to add a, a green mana for each elf you control. It's absolutely brilliant. Imperius perfect will pump up these little elves again. You can see. They might look little one one two twos, but they're going to be massive on the field. What's good about this as well, that you have some extra wing cons in there. You have Crater Hoof Behemoth that I don't actually own in paper, which is so annoying to me because I want one for my EDH decks. Um, but yeah, that's another story. And then you've got the cheaper version in paper, which is N-Ray's Forerunners as well. These can both be combat tricks, putting this in there. Um, not in speed, but you're getting this in there. When it ends, it ends the bad for other creatures you control, get plus 2-2, two, two, Vigilance and Trample, and Trample can be very important. And also Crater Hoop Behemoth, ends the bad forge. Creatures you control get Trample, important again, get plus X, plus X into end turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. Now, running, was it 34 creatures? We're going to be amassing a lot. Get that Crater Hoof Behemoth in there, and then just tromping over with, you know, big stompy Trample. It's brilliant. You look at the land base on this, it runs a couple of Carson Garren Brig, also runs a Snow Covered Forest as well, and then you've got a couple of Faces Haven, because if you're running Faces Haven, you need the Snow Forest. This is obviously up to you whether you want to do it, but this is a, a creature with visions, and it's all creature types, so will actually count as an elf as well. But, you know, if you haven't got that in your collection, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be terrible for the deck. You've, if you've got the main core of this, then you're lucky if you haven't got these in there. They're just there as an extra bit of oomph. Um, but yes, Mono Green Elves is a cracking deck, but let's get on to the next one. Now you'll see a bit of a theme in the best decks in Historic. Uh, this is another aggro deck. It's Gruul Aggro. This is where the creatures are, you know, slightly bigger at the start, and obviously Elves can overtake everything. Um, but this is a really cool dice. There's a lot of creatures 29 again and seven non-creature spells now if you play standard you will know a lot of these cards as well at the moment because throne of eldraine is was just 
It's a set that just impacted everything. And you've got an Ember Cleave in here. Great card. Um, for standard, I'm looking forward to that. Rotated, but historic, it's going to be there. You've got Questing Beast as well. Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste. Just one of the best green creatures recently that's been in standard. It's really cool. It's just an, a, you know, a, such an aggressive deck. You've got Llanowar Elves for a little bit of ramp. Another great one drop that gets a lot bigger in Pelt Collector. When this another creature enters the battlefield or dies, creature power greater than the power, you're going to put a 1 1 counter on it, which is super strong. As long as this has three or more counters, it gets a 1 it gets trample as well, which, you know, is pretty easy to do in this deck. More Throne of Eldraine cards in there. Robber of the Rich, aggressive. The more ramp I spoke about Llanowar Elves. Burning Tree Emissary. Um, I think was banned and then it was unbanned in historic if I'm right correct in that correct me in the chat if I'm wrong but I do think that was it and it's just such a strong card playing this and maybe just rolling into another creature as well so then you're just amassing more of a field new card playing Targ Nar. so this is a cool card I've been playing this in standard as well I think it's a good card if you attack a creature's power six or more attacking creatures get plus one plus nought you've also got ability to, to double the toughness as well so when you're playing ember cleaves and stuff like that it's just you can win from nowhere you really can people won't know what to block and what not to block but you know if they know you're playing Gore, they probably will know you're playing cleave so it always gives them that, you know, that hard decision of where to block. Other creatures in there. Throwing a bell drain again. It's Bone Crusher Giant. Great. One of the best three drops from recent times. You've got Still Leaf Champion. Triple Green. Tri triple Green. <laughs> triple Green. You might think it's a little bit hard, but no, it's, you know, it's a 5 4 for 3. Can't be bought by creatures power to it. So it's not going to be stopped by any tokens or potentially any weenie creatures or anything like that. Cruel Spellbreaker. Spellbreaker is another one. 3-3 three, three, has Riot, so you can maybe put a counter on it. Or it can just come, you know, with the aggression of this deck, like, you know, hasty stuff like Robber of the Rich and everything like that. And just keep attacking Questing Beast. Haste. You see a lot of haste in this deck. It's, it's a really speedy, but they're big, strong creatures in this deck. So where else it runs? Domri Ambush, 1-1 one, one counter on target creature. Then it deals damage equal to power target creature. More importantly as well, Planeswalker. It's nice to attack a Planeswalker. Two mana sorcery, so you can, you know, it's a good bit of removal for the deck. Spoke about Embercleave. All we knew is just go on to the lands now. Um, you'll see the historic. Historic is, you know, you want to put your, if you have shortened wild cards, you probably just want to go into one deck. But the lands are very important in historic, and, and, you know, they are rare lands, which is what makes this format, you know, slightly obtainable, unobtainable to some people, because, and it's just so annoying that everything you need is rares normally in the land base to make the deck stronger, which is understandable, but you expect that in a top meta deck. So what I'm saying is, you know, first things to craft are always is get your lands if you can. And then, you know, if you put it into one deck, just save up for this one deck. Rootborn Crag, we've got Stomping Ground, Crag Pawn. You know, you might have these from Standard as well. Hopefully you've got a lot of these in your collection if you've been playing for a while. Um, for, for the new player, it can be very daunting, but... You know, once you've got that one deck, a good deck like this, you're just going to be ranking up, hopefully. So, yeah, the Grawl Aggro, very, very good deck. But let's get on to the next deck. Now, when you're talking about aggro, you talk about goblins. Now, goblins in Historic are great. And they're pretty great because of Mucus, I call it, Muxus, Goblin Grandy, enters the battlefield, reveal the top six cards of your library, put all goblin creature cards, matter five or less, on the battlefield, the rest on the bottom of your library, when the mucus attacks, it gets plus one one to end a turn for each goblin you control. Now you'll be giving stuff haste. You've got, you know, you've got ways to ramp out with sacrificing a goblin. This is a very important card for the deck. Skirk Prospector. You've got Goblin Instigator. Now what you're noticing about this is that, yeah, there's a few rares, but not quite as many as some of the other decks. So this really could be a deck for you. You can make this slightly more budget if you want to as well. Um, but this is very much like elves. You are simply amassing as many creatures you can and getting just like the win as quickly as you can. You've got Goblin Machen. You may search your life for a Goblin card. Now this is when you go and get your Mucus or maybe just get a Chieftain. Other Goblins have haste then. You know, super important when you want Mucus coming down and attacking. It is super, super important to have that. If you give Krenko haste, You've got lots of goblins on the field. Tap them, create loads more. They've all got haste, just swinging in for the win. This is a, a very hard deck to play against if they've got the Toreo. The right draw, they literally just go off and they win. This is what goblins does. 
And you know, for the for the least amount of rares probably in all of these decks, this is a deck that is really, you know, quite obtainable for people to build. You're gonna have to sink in a few rares, but you're gonna be expect that in a meta deck. But for me, Goblins is very consistent, and for the rare ratio, it's probably one of the best decks out there. You do, you know, you've got Castle Embriff in there, you can even swap some of the lands. Phyrexian Towers in there, sacrifice a creature, add Black Mana if you need to, to ramp out a little bit quicker. But to me, these aren't essential that you need in there. You can just have the mountains if you want, and there you're going to be saving, you know, five rares if you need to. So for me, Goblin's probably one of the best decks in Historic, and for the rare ratio, again, it's absolutely brilliant. So final two decks now, and now we're going on to another Collected Company deck. Like I said, Versatile card can be used in many different decks. This one is around clerics or angels, whatever you prefer. There's a lot of clerics in it. There's a lot of angels in it. So you're playing life gain here. You've got Soul Warden in there, and everything comes around, revolves around life in this deck. Speaker of the Heavens. Great card. Can make 4-4 four, four angels if your life totals 7 or more above. And this is just a card that is just really take over a game. This little one drop, you know, you gain all the life you can. You fall Valkyrie. Another angel ends the battlefield. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Early play can get really, really big. Now, Bishops of Wings, when Angel ends the battlefield, gain four life. Four life! It's massive. Just playing a creature, get a little in there. Angel, you control dice, you create a 1 1 spirit anyway. So you've got, you know, you've got ways just to refill the board in this. This is a great early blocker as well, a 1 4 for 2 mana. Now, look at the rest of the deck. Righteous Valkyrie, one of the best cards in the deck. Ends the battlefield, Angel or Cleric, so it works very well with all the creatures in the deck. You gain life equal to the toughness. Now, Four toughness, Angel comes in, gain four life, four life. I mean, it's just insane. The life gain that this deck can put together. Resplendent Angel, if you gain five more life, create a 4-4 four, four Angel. You literally take over with power. You take to the skies, you fly, and you win. Bit of removal for taking anything out of the way. Potential flyers or anything important. Skyclave Apparition is in there as well. What works well with life gain is Heliod. I mean, this is a very, in contrast to the other deck, this is a very high rare mythic set, but this is super strong, very hard to beat. Life, you know, the little weenie decks, if this even just gets a, you know, an inkling of a stabilization in a game, it's very hard for all those decks to come back. They haven't got the flyers to take over, and the life gain is just too much for our opponents. It runs a one off the Book of Exalted Ds, one of the new cards. Um, at the beginning of the end set, if you gain three on one life, you create a 3 3 angel. So even less life, that triggers very well with Bishops of Wings. And, you know, literally this can be a game-winning card. You pay three, tap it, put an Enlightened Counter on an Angel. It gains you can't lose the game, your opponents can't win the game. I mean, just dirty. Then we've got Ajani in there. Gaining more life with the plus one is really cool. You can make an Ajani's Pride Mate. Now why? That's not Cleric, but that just works very well with life gain. And the zero... If you have at least 15 or more life than your starting life, just exile, you know, all the artifacts and creatures your opponents control. I mean, it's just really good. You lose your Planeswalker, but basically with your creatures on the battlefield, that's just gay geez. It's just a winning game move. Uh, get to the lands. You do run Blossoming Sands, you know, budget land, because it gains life. So that's really cool. Temple of Plenty, Temple of Garden, just in there as a one of in this configuration. Then you've got Branch Cloth, you know, but hopefully you will have from Standard as well. And Castle Arden Vale is in there as a one of, but if you need to get rid of that, you can. So you can save maybe a rare or not. I wouldn't, for me, it's not like an essential card for the deck. It's in there as a one of, and then lots of basics. This is, you know, a different deck to the other ones that we've seen so far. Very aggro, these. This is very much of stabilizing, gaining life, flying over the top, getting the evasion, using the company as we do in the other one, three or less. So, you, you know, you get look at the creatures, three or less. All of them. So you, if you hit a creature, we run 31 in this, so there's a very high chance that you can. 2.5 average of the CMC is not too bad either, and six non-creature spells. But for me, Angels, Life Game Clerics, I think is a very good deck, and for me, it's one of my favourite to play as well. Um, I'm missing the Helios from this and Resplendence. I do a different configuration, but for me, this is the best configuration. I just need those wild cards like so many others. So, last deck, a five-colour Ultimatum. Yes, this is a top deck. And this is uh, uh, just something completely off the wall. It's really, it's just different. Emergent Ultimaton, uh, recent card and standard that will be rotating out soon. Search your life for up to three monocolor cards with different names. Exile them. Pud and choose is one of them. Shuffle that card in your library and you get to cast the others without playing their mana costs. 
which seems very good, doesn't it? Very good. Now, Monocolors, what do you got? You got Scholar of the Lost Trove. Ends of battlefield, you may cast target instant sorcery card from your graveyard. Now, this is all about casting stuff from the graveyard. Lupin, you've got cards like Mizzix Mastery, Exile Target, Instant or Sorcery Card from your graveyard. You want to be discarding stuff in there and paying stuff for cheaper. So you've got your emergent in the graveyard. You've got rid of it with your faithless lootings, or maybe your cathartic reunions, or maybe your thrilling discovery as well. You can discard stuff in there, and then Mizzix Mastery gets to cast those cards for four mana. Oh, this deck is fun to play. I'm you know, I'm missing so many rares in this one, and I'm gutted because I really want to put it together. So if you do have this or very close to it, give it a go. Let me know what it's like in the comments if you can, if you play this deck. It just looks absolutely hilarious to play. Terror of the Peaks, one of my favorite cards from recent standard as well. Also, you know, bringing stuff back from the graveyard. There's so much recursion in this and draw and discard. I love it. Even if opponent messes with you and puts stuff in the graveyard, it doesn't matter. You can get stuff back and just maybe potentially get something in there. So mill players will probably hate playing against this because, you know, if they can't deal with these huge, huge creatures, there's going to be problems for our opponents. Also got final parting, search line for two cards, put the one in your hand and the other in your graveyard. So you've got so many ways to get stuff into the graveyard. If, you know, if a lot of these ultimatums, you're not building up to play it for the mana, you can just do it and cheat it instead. Seems fun. I mean, even Prismari was draw discard as well. There's so much draw discard in this deck. I mean, it just looks absolutely brilliant. It's definitely a deck that I'm going to work towards putting together. Um, land base, look at that. It's just disgusting. Sacred Foundry, Rare, Pathway, Advantage, Spiral Bluff. It's just massive in paper now as well. I mean, the deck is a rare fest, but it seems brilliant to play. So let me know what you do, because this is the kind of deck that I want to see played myself before I venture in, which is, which is you know, sometimes good. You see other people that have got this together, and this is their deck, and that's what you want to do. You want to see it play first. Um, you know, if you want to see me play it, let me know, and I'll just check any wild cards I can in there, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. But anyway, this is the last deck. Super Sun, super fun, five-color ultimatum. Um, and I hope today you've enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up. It really does help out. Uh, let me know what you think of these decks. Do you play any of these? Are there any of the top meta decks that you think should be in there as well? You know, I just picked five of the best that I find here. And just let me know what you think. Um, are you going to try and put some of these together? I think Goblins is very good for a lot of people. Even if you want to get into the story and you don't like Mono Red, which you know, I'm not a great fan of, but I know it's a good deck and there's less rares to sort of mould for that deck, so I like that. But yeah, big shout out to all my Patreons. Thank you for that extra support. And if you want to see that and see early deck lists and everything I do behind the scenes and stuff like that, go and, you know, go and have a look on Patreon. Have a look. I just appreciate you just even looking. But anyway, you lot take care, and I'll see you on the next video.